So we come to the fourth cup of the wedding celebration. This, of course, the cup of marriage, the cup of consummation. The symbol was, was marriage. It, it was a tremendous moment of celebration, of consummation of the marriage. The, there are different stages in the celebration and we've come from the betrothal right the way through now to the consummation. It wouldn't all have happened just in one day as it does uh, with us in many respects. The wedding service took place over, over days or even weeks or months from the betrothal. It's so full and so rich and here we come. And, and in many respects, this is, this is the cup of praise again. This is the cup of rejoicing. This is the cup that we will drink one day in heaven as Jesus prophesied. This beautiful fourth cup. But of course, I, I realise that for some that's a challenge. And I, I really felt that, that with this cup, as I as I talked about it, I want to pray for one group of people who are very, very dear to my heart and those that, that are looking for their mate in life. This fourth cup, this cup that, that is this celebration. I watch some of my, my dear friends and spiritual sons and daughters going to many, many weddings and of course longing for that for themselves. And of course, that is the longing of Jesus. There's nothing wrong with that longing. He is the bridegroom who is longing for the consummation of the marriage as his bride is brought home. And so in many respects, I just want to encourage you that your longing is actually a taste of how Jesus is feeling, looking down and, and waiting, waiting for his bride. I just want to encourage every one of you. You see, even this is in there. That, that need, perhaps at times you felt maybe a little guilty. Maybe you've even felt that it was a little carnal, a little fleshly. I want to encourage you, it isn't. This takes us right back, of course, to the very, very beginning. This takes us back to the garden, to the one thing in the garden that wasn't good. It wasn't good for man to be alone. And so in this fourth cup, we see the praise, the consummation. We see the finale of the celebration, of course, the consummation of the marriage. It takes us back because God would say it's not good for man to be alone. And so he created Eve. There's something about this. There's something about this union of man and woman that, that I don't think we've really fully understood or fully explored. I love that in Genesis 1.26, it says, let us make man in our image, male and female, he created. That the both represent the Father, God, Creator. And so as I think about this cup, this, this fourth cup of the celebration, I want to pour it in and, and think of people that are dear to my heart, who are, who are longing for their mates, who are praying for their mates, who are single. And even in a season like this, it it's, must be so difficult at times to be alone. And so I'm praying. As I pour this in, I'm praying and thinking specifically of people that I know and love. And praying that they would find their mate. You see, this is in here. It, it's part of our faith. God said it's not good for man to be alone. It's in his heart for a husband and a wife to be united in marriage. And it is a picture of all eternity when the bridegroom will receive his bride into eternal life. And we will celebrate the marriage supper of the Lamb. So I want to just bless you. I want to encourage you, even if you feel, perhaps you feel right now and you think, gosh, is it right for me to, to be so desiring uh, of having a husband or a wife? I, I want to say yes it is okay. It's more than okay. It's the heart of God. It's the desire of God. And the marriage is so wrapped up and an integral part of life as human beings made in the image of God. And so I just want to take a moment and pray for everyone out there that's single, not in a weird way, but I pray that you'll find your mate. Even in this season, perhaps this will be the season where everything changes. So, Father, I pray for those that I know, for any single people that are watching this, I pray that you would release hope into their hearts and that they would begin to dare to dream that in the cup, in the cup, as it were, is the promise 
the promise of a husband or of a wife, the promise of marriage, the promise of family. I pray that you'd bless those that are single, that you would comfort them. I pray for widows and widowers, and especially any that have recently been uh, bereaved and lost loved ones. All this is in here. Jesus is, is one who's acquainted with every emotion and every need of man, and I bless you. In your singleness, I bless you. I bless you for a breakthrough, and I bless you to know his love and his comfort. I bless you to know that he cares he sees, he knows, and he understands. But this fourth cup of praise points to the great celebration, points to that celebration when we'll all come home, that celebration that's in the, the story of the prodigal son, the killing of the fatted calf, the celebration. It's a picture of that wrapped up with so much joy and praise and celebration. All of this is in here.